Hello and welcome to um, day is it six of the speed runs. Today we have a lot to go through. I think we have like nine sub chapters to go through. So let's just get started. It's going to be all about functions and different types of functions. So the first function we need to look at is the quadratic function. And this is like as a baseline, everybody should know what a quadratic function is. So the quadratic function looks something like y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all constants and a is not equal to zero. <laughs> so there are a few other ways you can express this. First, you can express it in the form a times x minus h squared plus k. Um, this is called the vertex form because h, k will be the coordinates of the vertex with this, like the bottom of the curve. So this point will be h, k. And finally, we can ex express it in intercept form, which is a x minus p times x minus q. And what this tells us is where the graph intersects the um, x, the x axis. So this point would be P zero and this point would be Q zero. So this tells us the root. So these, it's useful to know all three versions of how you can express the quadratic formula and they will be helpful. I guess the one last thing we need to talk about is the concave concavity of the function. And well, what do we mean by this? The, well, if the function is looks something like this, it means that is it is concave up. And if the function looks like this, it means it is concave down. And um, that that's pretty much it. And so let's now jump into some questions regarding quadratic formulas or formulae. So um, I think today the chapters are much, well, sorry, the actual questions are much shorter, but there's a lot more of them. So first we want to, for each quadratic function, determine the equation of the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and state its concavity, domain, and range. Oh, uh, I need to talk about a bit about the axis of symmetry, but for a quadratic formula, the axis of symmetry is simply equal to x is equal to negative b over 2a. Because um, if we write it in this form, it's, yeah, just, just know that this b means that. So you just take the coefficient of x and divide by 2 times the coefficient of a and take the negative value of that. And that's all you have to do to find the axis of symmetry. OK, so let's do um, our first quadratic formula. And what we're going to do is we're going to see y is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 8. So the equation of the axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a, which is negative 6 over 2 times 1, since this is 1. So, neg so negative 6 over 2 is equal to negative 3. So it's when x is equal to negative 3, that is the axis of symmetry. So we've got that done. Um, we need to find the vertex, so we need to rearrange this in, oh, we need to rearrange this in vertex form. And we can do that. This will simply be x, mm, x plus 3 squared minus 17. Uh, sorry, no, minus 1. Because if you expand this, you'll get, um, x squared plus 6x plus 9. And you need to copy this first part, which is x squared plus 6x, and then just change the last constant so it matches up. So in this case, we have to subtract 1. And to get the vertex from this, the vertex is simply the negative value of this and this. So the vertex in this case would be 
negative 3, negative 1. So that is the vertex of the equation. So for um, in terms of concavity, well, I guess just for quadratic functions, for other functions is a bit different, but for quadratic functions, we can simply look at the exponent of a. If this x squared is negative, it means it's concave down. If this x squared is positive, it means it's concave up. In this case, it's positive. It's equal to 1 x squared. And so it is equal to concave up. Domain, I believe, is infinite. It's just um, x is part of a, the, it, it's a real number. And range, OK, so. Since we know the vertex is negative 3, negative 1, and we know it's concave up, it means negative 1 will be the lowest point in its range. So the range of this function would be y is greater or equal to negative 1. OK, that was it for that question. So let's move on to another formula. So the next formula will be Mm. Oh, computer's a bit slow today. But anyways, our next formula will be one change, change colors. Okay, there. Y is equal to 3x squared minus 12x minus 5. So first, the equation of the axis of symmetry is simply negative v over 2a. Sorry, x is equal to negative v over 2a. So it would be negative negative 12, which is 12, over 2a, which is 3 over times 2 is 6. So the axis of symmetry would be where x is equal to 2. Um, let me just uh, check that that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. OK. Now we need to define the vertex, and so we need to rearrange this function into vertex form. So we know 3x minus 12, 3x squared minus 12x minus 5 should be equal to y is equal to 3 times x minus 2 squared. Since if we expand this, this would be 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. And since it's only minus 5, sorry, but, sorry, since it is minus 5, it means we have to subtract the constant from this vertex. 12 minus minus 5 is equal to negative 17. So the, in vertex form, this would be 3x minus 2 squared minus 17. So the vertex would be 2, negative 17. Um, yep. So... We need to find if it's concave up. Since this is a positive um, exponent on x squared, we know that it is concave up. The domain should be this x is any real number. And the range, well, we know the bottom is negative 17. So it must be y um, is greater or equal to negative 17. So that's the range. Pretty simple. OK. For the next set of problems, um, we have use the information shown in each graph to write the equation of the quadratic function it represents. Select the most appropriate form for Oh, it's lagging. Form for. Come on, Windows. For finding the function. Oh, it's really laggy today. OK, so the first graph looks something like this. And we're given that 
this point is equal to zero, oh sorry, is equal to two, negative 16. And this point here is equal to zero, negative 12. So this is um, a pretty simple function. We know that it is, we, we, we should express this in vertex form. That would be the best way to express it. And we know the vertex is two, negative 16. So we know it has to be of the form y is equal to a times x minus 2 squared minus 16. And now we need to substitute this other point in to find out what a is. So in this case, negative 12 is equal to a times 0 minus 2, which is negative 2 squared minus 16. 12 is equal to 4a minus 16. Um, so it looks like a is equal to 1, simply, because 12, negative 12 is equal to 4 plus 16, 4 minus 16. So our final form would be y is equal to x minus 2 squared minus 16. So that's how you would express this function. Okay, on to the next one. So we have the function here we are given that and these are all quadratic i'm sorry i'm just drawing them very badly so this point is one zero and this point is five zero and this point is four negative twelve so in this case we should express it in the form of its roots since we have both of the roots and that's the form y is equal to oh y is equal to a times x minus p times x minus q. So the root here is 1, so it would be x minus 1. And the other root is 5, so q would be 5, so it's x minus 5. And so now we substitute this last third point in to figure out what the equation is. So negative um, 12 is equal to a times 4 minus 1 is equal to... Uh, 3 and 4 minus 5 is equal to negative 1. So in this case, we know a must equal to 4 since um, negative 12 is equal to negative 3a. So therefore, the final equation should be that y is equal to 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 5. So that's it, and we can now move on to the final problem. So the final problem gives us a graph that looks like this. Oh, nope, I've drawn it wrong. A graph that looks like this. And we have negative 5, 0 here. Over here we have 2, 0. And over here we have one, three, all on the curve. So again, we need to express it in the form of its roots. So we have y is equal to a times x minus minus five is equal to x plus five, since p is equal to minus five, and q is equal to two, so it would be x minus two. And then we substitute this third point in, so we have three is equal to a times one plus five is six, times one minus two is negative one. So um, we have 3 divided by negative 6 is equal to a, so a is equal to negative 1 half. So our final form for this equation is y is equal to negative 1 half times x plus 5 times x minus 2. Okay, that's it. So I hope you um, enjoyed the speed run. It was a pretty fast one, but we have a lot to go through today. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.